Hey everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to make three no-sew Halloween costumes for your stuffed animals. These three are all meant to be pretty easy, unlike my video last year where two of them were pretty extra. So these are some last minute ones, pretty fitting for the timing I decided to film and post this video. Now let's get started! Okay, so first of all, hope you like the nails. I did this last year, but I'm not sure if I filmed a video during that time. Secondly, I hope the video quality isn't too bad. Usually I film during the day with natural lighting, but because I got a nine to five job, I don't have as much time. So this was filmed at night with my bedroom lamp. So hopefully it's okay and I can keep filming them at night. Okay, I'm gonna start with a super classic costume that I can't believe I haven't done up to this point. And that is of course a pirate. There aren't too many options for no sew clothing items, but a really easy one is a vest. So I'm gonna be making this for Harold here and I grabbed this piece of brown felt. And this is the longest rectangle I could cut out of my piece of felt. The ends don't quite touch in the middle, but that's okay. And I'm just wrapping this around him and taking note of where his arms are so I can cut some armholes. After cutting both armholes, I'm going to cut the sides at an angle so they look more like a vest. And I just cut one first, then fold it in half to do the other one so they're symmetrical, unlike my armholes. And this last thing is optional since you can't really see it in the back, but I'm going to cut a little curve out of the top edge in the back just to be the neckline. And that's it for this simple vest. I feel like brown or black would work best for a pirate costume. Okay, now this needs a little pop of color. So I found some red fabric in my drawer and it's all cut up like this, so there's not much to work with but I'm just looking for a few scraps to tie around his waist to be kind of a belt. And to make everything look really ragged, I'm going to tear it instead of cut it. So this is surprisingly easy to do with cotton fabric. You just need to make a tiny cut to start it off and then you can just rip it. Since all the strips I was able to get out of this were pretty short, I had to tie three or four together to get it to fit around his waist. And I did want it extra long, so it kind of hung down. I can't really explain why I wanted that look. It just felt piratey, I guess. But you can also use the same technique as like, you know, one of those head covers they wear, I feel like. Or if you do like a bigger version of this and do like an upside down trapezoid, you can make it like a torn skirt that ties in the side. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the belt. I added some extension pieces because they were a little short. And now, of course, I got to make an eye patch if he's going to be a pirate. So I got some black felt here and I'm just cutting it into an oval shape. I wish I would have made this bigger, but his eye's really close to like his snout, so I just made it small. And then I added little cuts to the side so I could tie on some stretchy string on each side so it'll strap on. And that's all you have to do for the eye patch. You of course can mix and match all these components, but I feel like the eye patch really sells it. Next, I'm gonna make the pirate hat out of some black construction paper. So I've already sketched out the shape I want, but of course it's kind of hard to see because it's on black paper. I didn't even fold it in half to make it symmetrical since I didn't want any bends in the paper, but I pretty much freehanded it and it doesn't have to be perfect. And since this isn't gonna be long enough to fit around his head, I'm gonna do a second one of these. Then I can tape both sides together to connect them and close up the hat. And lastly, to really sell this is a pirate hat because I wasn't quite convinced with the shape I came up with, I'm gonna paint on a white skull and bones on the front. And once it's dry, I just added the details in with a Sharpie. Okay, now the last little prop I made, I'm just gonna breeze past because it's just really simple. All it is is a crumpled up piece of paper that I rolled up to be a map. And I happen to have this little hair rubber band laying around, so I used that to tie in the middle. And then to make the map look more dirty and aged, I just yellowed the paper with some watercolors. And once it dried, I just tucked it into his belt. I feel like there are so many different props you could make for this, like a sword or a telescope, but I just wanted to keep it simple and short, so I didn't do all of that. But I hope this gave you some ideas if you wanna do a quick pirate costume for your stuffed animal. And now it looks like he's posing as a pirate. Just really getting into character, I guess. Now moving on to our second costume, which works great for stuffed animals with four legs or laying down, and that is the snail. To make this, you will need a lot of paper, and I already have this like roll of brown butcher paper. My family's just always had it for some reason, 
but I just cut a long rectangle of that. I think it was about a foot wide and four feet long. And I'm first just crumpling the whole thing a bunch. And then I'm gonna start twisting it in one direction and then rolling that up into a circle, which is gonna create the shell. A good thing about this is a lot of packaging these days can come with just a bunch of brown paper. So you could reuse that for this costume by just gluing them together with a glue stick all flattened out and then doing this exact same thing. Of course, this is gonna look pretty rough and imperfect, but as you twist, it's good to keep in mind which side you want to be the outside because that'll just be the nicer one you prefer. Now I can start holding this whole thing together with hot glue. So starting in the center, I'm just adding a little bit here and there to stick it together. And the good thing is since this is all twisted up, you can still adjust the paper a little bit. So I'm gonna go in and try to fluff it up and make it a little bit wider so the shell is as thick as possible with not as much paper. And another thing I did is tried to push out the center on the good side a little bit more. So when I glue it to the other piece, both of those centers will be sticking out more just like a real shell. Now I'm gonna do this one more time so I have a second one and can glue this together with the good sides facing out. I ended up putting the hot glue basically everywhere, but I realized for my idea to work and the centers to be sticking out a little bit more, I should have only put it on the edges. I think it still turned out fine, but something I would have done differently. Okay, here's what it looks like after pulling it apart even more to give it maximum width. But now I need to make a little backpack thing for it to strap onto. So I'm just grabbing some thin cardboard from a cereal box and cutting out a rectangle that will fit the shell on top. And I, of course, would like it to not show as much, but it's like a round surface, so you just have to decide how big you want to make that base. Then I'm just hole punching those corners so I can tie string to them and create those backpack straps. And I feel like I didn't even introduce my model Bean here. He was in an unboxing actually pretty recently. I don't know, a couple months ago. And I feel like his body shape and color really work with this costume. Okay, after measuring the other side and getting that perfect length for the straps, I can glue the shell on top. And right where the paper kind of ends is where I'm going to have the bottom be. And of course, be very careful when working with hot glue to really press this into the base. I'm making sure to use another object besides my fingers to really secure the surfaces together. And after that, the shell is complete. Now, I think this is enough to sell the snail idea, but I'm going to add the eyes of the snail, which I didn't realize were their eyes until I just looked it up, but that does make a lot of sense when you see them like in cartoons. But luckily I have some pipe cleaners in a similar tan color that I'm gonna start by twisting in the middle to make a loop. Then I'm gonna add another loop on top of that to really emphasize it. Then I'm just twisting the two ends together as tight as I can until they're the length I want them. Then I'm gonna make one more to make the second eye. Then with the leftover pipe cleaner ends, I'm going to twist them together to make the middle of the headband and then curve the rest down to be the edges. I tried this on my stuffed animal as I went to get the best look and I kept the eyes pretty close together since I felt like that was most accurate. Okay, now I can try those on and kind of point them outwards like a snail. And this costume is done. It's pretty hard to show with my camera setup because this shell is just huge, but I hope you like this one. And shout out to my best friend who did this costume in like seventh grade. I took this exact idea from her. Okay, my nails have been getting worse and worse as the video goes on. So that means we are on the final costume, which is gonna be a milkshake. The first thing you need is some construction paper in the color you want the milkshake flavor to be, but I wanted to do a strawberry milkshake and didn't have pink construction paper, so I just painted some other colors pink, which works too. I'm wrapping the paper around her like a dress and cutting it off before it hits her feet, and then gluing the two pieces together since my first piece wasn't long enough to wrap around her whole body. And I later realized I could have also done this with felt to make it more comfortable, but Really, whatever you have will work. After taping up the back, I'm grabbing some stuffing to use as the kind of whipped cream on top of a milkshake. So I'm just stuffing that in the top portion of the paper. And I didn't really want to fully commit and glue this in or anything. So I feel like if this is wrapped around tight enough, it does stay put pretty well. So you can still reuse the stuffing after. Now this is looking a little plain, so I decided to add some rainbow sprinkles on top using just some construction paper I'm cutting into little rectangles. 
And I obviously didn't use this many, but can never have too many sprinkles. I unfortunately lost the footage of me putting these on, but I basically just used some Elmer's liquid glue to glue these onto the whipped cream since I figured they'd be pretty easy to pick off after. Next, I'm going to make a quick red stripe straw to put in. So I just took a piece of paper and drew a bunch of red stripes with a marker. And sorry about the color being weird on the video for this. It's because I used this blue notebook as a background and that just messed everything up for some reason. But I just used a marker to get that curve started and then rolled it up into a pretty chunky straw. Okay, the last element I'm going to put together real quick is the cherry on top. Literally. This is really similar to what I did in my first ever Halloween costume video where I made a cupcake. So this one is just a slightly smaller pom-pom because -pom I couldn't find that big one. And then I added a really thin twig to that to be the stem. Now I can add those final elements. So I'm tucking the straw into that paper dress. And I probably should have made it longer because you definitely want to see it sticking out. And then I folded up a tiny piece of tape to stick the cherry on top. And that's it for the milkshake costume. You know me, I had to do at least one food costume, and I think this turned out super cute. Now that's it for this year's Halloween costume video. I really hope you all enjoyed it, and there's enough time to try some of these out if you want to. Please give this video a like, comment any video suggestions you have, and subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you all have an amazing Halloween, and I'll see you next time!